Hello, and today we're going to be reviewing the Ryobi P737D 18 volt high pressure inflator. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, starting off at the bottom of the tool, we have the 18 volt battery slot, which will accept Ryobi 18 volt batteries. Overall, the battery slot is a fairly typical Ryobi battery slot, and there are no glaring of problems here. The batteries fit in nice and securely, and there really is no looseness or play, so that's a bonus. Then, well, when it comes to the battery life of the, this particular tool, it's going to be great for your smaller jobs, such as filling up wagon or bicycle tires, or filling up the occasional football or basketball. But if you are planning on using this for, well, topping off car tires, it's definitely going to take a little while. I would highly recommend looking at one that has an automatic turn-off function, unlike this particular tool. So, depending on what your purpose and needs are, the battery life on this particular tool will be completely adequate with, it, with a smaller battery, say a 1.5 hour battery, but if you are intending on using this for larger tires, you're definitely going to want to pick up a larger battery. Okay, next up we have the tip storage. The tip storage is located on the base of the tool above the battery and will allow you to easily transport several different tips on the tool without the need of having to pack an additional container. I really do like this concept. However, I don't think it's implemented all that well on this particular tool. I really think having some sort of a little door that slides over or folds over the uh, area would be very beneficial and well, quite frankly, the storage technique here isn't exactly bulletproof. I've already lost several tips and had to order replacements for this particular tool. And so quite frankly, I'm a little bit disappointed here. I really do like having the tips stored on the tool. It definitely makes transporting this tool easier, but there are several other glaring problems with this particular tool. And so that's why I think it's in need of a redesign. But it is useful for when you just need to grab the tool and go and not spend a long amount of time looking for your uh, accessories for this particular inflator. So if you do end up purchasing this inflator, just make sure that you uh, check the tips whenever you're about to transport it to make sure they're firmly locked into place. Okay, next up we have the grip. Now the grip on this particular tool is, well, it's a fairly standard grip for an inflator. It's a vertical grip with no slant and it features a rubberized texture to allow you to hold onto it better, which you probably need because it's not going to allow you to get your hand fully around it or, well, enclose your hand fully around it because it's a little bit on the chunky side. And why I personally think that it's passable, I would have liked to have seen it be a little bit slimmer just so that you can have a better grip on this particular tool, but it is an inflator and you technically don't need to have that great of a grip, it's just more of a personal preference. So at the end of the day, the grip is going to still get a pass, just barely, but I hope in future iterations of this particular tool that this is an area of the tool that gets a drastic redesign, but that's just my own personal preference. Moving on. Okay, next up we have the trigger, which is rather triggering for a variety of reasons. Now the trigger on this particular tool is a standard design. It's a simple piece of plastic, which is gray in nature and completely smooth and is, well, fairly simple. You hold it and it runs. When you release it, it turns off. There's no way of keeping it running without holding it. So if you're planning on filling up a large, say, spare tire for your vehicle, you're going to have to stand there the entire time until it's done inflating, which is understandable since there's no sort of pressure cutoff switch in this particular tool. And you'll have to be paying attention to what the little meter on the back says, but we'll cover that here in a second. But the one feature on this particular tool that it's not doesn't have and is a glaring weakness would be the fact that it doesn't feature any sort of a safety which means that whenever you are carrying this tool and several other items at the same time at some point the tool will turn itself on and scare you half to death especially if you're walking through a parking lot late at night this has happened to me on several occasions and i'm rather surprised i haven't died of a heart attack because it's not a sound that you particularly want to hear when you are all by yourself walking through a parking lot and all of a sudden you hear this weird growling noise so at the end of the day the trigger is adequate for its intended purpose but it's definitely missing some very useful features and a necessity for well when you are transporting this particular tool a safety that also means that you can't transport it in a tool bag with a battery in it because it will turn itself on and run out of the battery every single time. So quite frankly, the trigger needs a redesign and while it is adequate, it's definitely not the best in the world. Quite frankly, it feels rather unfinished. Okay, next up we have the gauge. The gauge is located on the rear of the tool above the grip and is, well, a fairly standard design for an inflator tool. It is a digital gauge, which is illuminated by a blue light and goes up in increments of 0.5. So you'll start off at like 0, 0 0.5, 1, 
1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, you get the idea. It's a fairly standard design and it's perfectly adequate for its intended purpose. I will say that it is not the most accurate gauge when the tool is turned on and running. When you let up off the trigger, then you will get a fairly accurate reading. So just be aware that the higher your PSI, the more the gauge is going to be off until you let up, up off the trigger. So that's just something to be aware of. A lot of times the tool will say like 37 PSI and then when you release the trigger, it will go down to 35 PSI, which is fairly close to the accurate pressure. That's just something you need to be aware of and just, well, FYI. So yeah, moving on. Okay, next up we have the air hose. The air hose is made out of a nylon braided material and is about 20 inches in length. This is going to allow you to, well, get into awkward positions and, well, quite frankly, that's going to be very helpful in a variety of different circumstances. At the end of the day, I don't really have any major complaints when it comes to the air hose. It's not too long, it's not too short, it's pretty much just right. And as long as you, well, are fine with wrapping the hose around the tool in sort of a knot in order to transport it, you won't have any major issues. It would have been nice if their hose stored method that they've shown in the ads would have worked, but it really doesn't. So you're just going to have to make do with the method I had in the video. So yeah, moving on. And last but not least, we have the connector. The connector on this particular tool is a clamp style, which is definitely the way to go over the screw style connector. And quite frankly, it works as intended, and I really don't have any complaints here. You simply have it in the uh, straight position when you are attaching it to the tire and then you flip it down into the lock position and then you will start to inflate the tire. Nothing else to say, it works as intended and I'm glad they decided to go with the clamp style instead of the screw style. So yeah, moving on. Okay, moving on to the weight of the tool. Without a battery, the tool weighs 621 grams, which is almost 1.4 pounds. And with a 1.5 amp hour battery, it weighs 1,033 grams, which is about 2.2 pounds. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this tool in use. Overall, I've actually been fairly happy with this tool's performance when it comes to, well, its intended purpose. And that would be to inflate things that are small in nature. I've been using it to inflate footballs, volleyballs, uh, your kickballs, you know, pretty much any sort of inflatable sports ball that you might need to inflate. And this does a good job. It will also work with all your standard, you know, uh, small tires, such as what you'll find on your bicycle, your wheelbarrow, your wagon, and even your golf cart or riding lawnmowers. Once you get up to ATV sized tires, it's going to start taking a little bit longer, but it's still usable. Once you get up to car sized tires or bigger, I would highly recommend looking at a more powerful inflator. This will work for when you need to just top off your tires in cold weather to get that sensor light to turn off and it will be just fine for that purpose. But anything like filling a tire up from being completely flat is not gonna be a fun experience and you will probably go through multiple batteries. So as long as you're using this tool for its intended purpose, its performance is completely satisfactory and I don't have any complaints there. When it comes to transporting this particular tool, yeah, that needs a complete redesign and the ergonomics could use some improvements too. So just be aware of that and as long as you're aware of its shortcomings, you'll probably be perfectly satisfied with this tool. But with that being said, let's go ahead and go through the pros and cons. And the first pro is 18 volt. 18 volt means that it will work with all your Ryobi 18 volt batteries and you'll be able to adapt batteries over from other brands via third party adapter. Just remember, you do that at your own risk. Okay, tip storage. On the pro side, we have, it's, well, great for transporting the tool without having to carry around a bunch of extra things. And quite frankly, that's why it's a pro, but we'll cover why it's a con here in a second. Hose. Overall, the air hose on this particular tool is pretty much just fine in every single way. It's not too long, it's not too short, and it seems to be made out of a high quality material that isn't going to easily degrade. So as far as I'm concerned, the air hose is a pro. Locking head. Yeah, it should have said clamping head. I kind of goofed on this one, but I'm talking about the connector for attaching it to the tire. Overall, this is definitely the way to go, and I really do prefer having this over the twisting connector. And so as far as I'm concerned, the clamping head or locking head is definitely a pro in my opinion. And the first con would be the trigger. The trigger is, it's not great. I really do want that trigger lock. And for me personally, this is going to give me a heart attack eventually. So as far as I'm concerned, the trigger is definitely way too sensitive. And the fact that you can't lock it for transportation is definitely a major con. And the next con would be the gauge. Now the gauge is actually fairly nice on this particular tool. I just wish it was a little bit more accurate when the tool is running. So yeah, that's just sort of a minor, minor, minor con. 
And next up we have the size. The size of this particular tool isn't horrid. It's just kind of on the bulky side. I really think it could have been slimmed down a little bit. So yeah, it's a little bit of a con. Not a big one, but it's still on that list. Grip. Overall, the grip on this tool isn't horrible either, but it's definitely on the thick side. And if you have smaller size hand, it's, it could be a little bit of an issue for you. And last but not least, we have tip storage again. Yeah, I really do like that it has onboard tip storage. I just wish they had some sort of a cover that went over the storage area so that there would be less of a chance that you would end up losing the tips. So yeah, that's a con as well as a pro. And that's it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on this particular tool. Overall, I really want to like this particular tool. I think it does a great job. And if all you're going to do is leave it at home on your workbench, it's going to be just fine. But if you're somebody who travels a lot, say you go on uh, dirt bike trips or ATV trips in the backcountry in the mountains, or if you're somebody that goes to a lot of different soccer games and you're somebody that you know works with the equipment and need a, an inflator, this is definitely not going to make you a very happy customer because of, well, the fact it's missing a trigger lock and it's going to go off every five seconds giving you a heart attack. I think I've mentioned that once or twice already. But at the end of the day, this is a tool that needs a refresh from Ryobi and I really hope they come out with one because when they do, I will probably buy the updated model as long as it has a trigger lock on it. Because quite frankly, that is its biggest con and quite frankly, everything else is something I could live with without really giving it too much thought. But the fact that this thing always gives me a heart attack when I'm carrying it is not a fun feeling. So if you're in the Ryobi system and you need a, well, high pressure inflator for small tires or sports equipment, this isn't a bad option to take a look at. But if you're in any other battery system, maybe take a look at something else. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and we will see you next time. God bless.